prize package of the final, Eric Verdonk from New Zealand. Richard Powell, Australian winner of his heat. Favourite, Stephen Redgrave from England, who won the other heat. For Scotland, Philip Kittermaster. And for Wales, Chris Howell. Canada then in lane one, nearest to the camera. Then New Zealand, Australia, England, Scotland, and Wales. And Redgrave goes out. The start is good. The start is confirmed as good and it's Verdonk, the New Zealander, who takes a small lead at the start, which comes as no surprise. He uh, set the fastest pace for 500 and 1,000 metres in his heat. The question about Verdonk will be how he'll withstand the pressure when it begins to apply in the second 1,000 metres. At the moment, it's Verdonk who came here as reserve for the eight, but is now beginning to wonder about the possibility of a medal in the single skulls. Beyond him there, though, already showing Stephen Redgrave of England. Redgrave, who's in three events here, and very much the favourite for this one. Well, Stephen Redgrave will be looking to try and dominate this race. The back of his mind, though, is that the weakness that he has shown in the third quarter of a race and it's not in his interest to get too far in front and then find the field catching up on him and this has been his most recent experience where he lost in the final of the Diamond Scars at Henley when exactly that happened to him he came out very fast and paid for it by the middle of the course now he seems to have learned from that and he's coming a much steadier rhythm and it looks to me as if he's going to try and keep his pace through the middle half of the course and just wear down the opposition he really should be capable of winning this, this, this medal today it's well within his powers. He's a very strong man, 15 stone 10, 6 foot 5. He's in a field where most of the other skulls are untried. 1 minute 43 at the 1500 metre mark, which is 3.5 seconds slower than the Donk was uh, in his heat. But that may have something to do with the conditions, which are not easy today. An apprentice boat builder by profession. Six feet two and a half and thirteen stone nine. The Donk leading for New Zealand, Redgrave second for England, and Richard Powell of Australia just a canvas behind Redgrave in third. Stephen Redgrave's going well within his normal rhythm race of race rhythm of 32 strokes a minute. The Donk is taking some three strokes a minute more and uh, he's going to find it hard to maintain that pace in the second half. And this could well turn out to be a considerable duel between Richard Powell of Australia, who is a strong scholar through the middle part of the course, and Stephen Redgrave. At the moment, they're matching one another stroke for stroke through this second 500. Powell in second position, Redgrave in third, and looking back, fifth position, fourth position with Mike Hughes. Early shows their donk's lead in lane two. Powell just second, but nothing in it between him and Redgrave, who is in lane four. Canada in fourth place in lane one, then Wales fifth and Scotland sixth. The donk continues to hold his lead and nothing between Powell and Redgrave. Time at halfway, unofficially, 3 minutes 34.67, so the race certainly being uh, sculled more slowly than in the heats. But that undoubtedly attributable to the conditions. Stephen Redgrave beginning to make a move now. He's pushing up, pushing away from the Australian scholar, he's come up level and slightly ahead of him and he'll now be looking to make an impression and test for Donk at this stage of the race. This third 500 is, is crucial in experienced internationals and they have to be able to maintain the pace in the third quarter. I think we're going to see Stephen Redgrave beginning to run up over the Australian and onto Eric Verdonk in New Zealand. 
He's going strongly, good natural rhythm still. Doesn't appear to be under any particular pressure. 750 metres to go. And you have to recall the completely different approach to this race that uh, Redgrave has had from the other two. The season entirely different, of course, in Australia and New Zealand. Their season ended in March, whereas Redgrave has had a build-up through a competitive European season. And what a season he's had, too. He's won in five different classes at international regattas this season. I must say that it's not been the ideal build-up for, for a sculling event. Normally a sculler will specialise in just that. He's attempting to do something which has never been done in recent years, which is to actually achieve three wins in three events, one of them being a sculling event. Here he is beginning to close in up on Eric Verdonk, sculling strongly. He's moved ahead of Richard Powell. He's moving towards the lead position. He's moved into choppy water as well, and this is going to be a different technical exercise in the last 500 metres. An unofficial time at the 500 metre mark, just under 5 minutes and 33 seconds. It's Greg Grave in the lead. He's taken the lead with less than 500 metres to go. The question is whether anybody can keep with him. Richard Powell moving behind him. I think Eric Verdonk has shot his bow. At this stage, he has not very much left. Uh, the dock slowed appreciably in his previous races and it does begin to look as though Redgrave has judged this to a nicety. Redgrave leads, Powell second for Australia, the dock third for New Zealand. This is going to be still a close race, it's less than the length covering, covering the three boats. The question is whether Richard Powell has got anything in him to challenge Stephen Redgrave. They come up towards the last 250 metres, take them approximately 32 strokes. Stephen Redgrave into that last 250 metres, working his way to the finish. The order of the programme worked out nicely for Redgrave. This is uh, Powell, in second place. But Redgrave has got his single skulls out of the way today, then he's got a rest day tomorrow, and after that, his top his Cox's pair and the first. Redgrave coming up now with about 150 metres or even less still to go and establishing his command over the Australian and the New Zealander. England have never won a gold medal in this event. Four to Australia and two to New Zealand is the history of the event. But Redgrave is now going to change that. He's now got two, maybe two and a half lengths advantage over Powell of Australia. And this is a triumph which Stephen Redgrave will save. Gold medal in the final of the men's single skulls at the Commonwealth Games. Silver for Richard Powell of Australia. And a bronze for Eric Verdonk, which will perhaps have surprised him as much as anybody. There's a popular winner. Stephen Redgrave in the single skulls. The winner of the gold medal for the men's single skulls, England, represented by S. Redgrave. Another gold medal to add to what is becoming a very distinguished collection indeed. Good old S. Redgrove, as they're calling him. Steve, he's in fact going for three medals.